Good evening everyone and welcome to Live Bird TV. So this is going to be my preview for Liverpool versus Everton and then in the next half an hour I'm going to do uh, basically uh, a video on the uh, decision on the Premier League to charge Manchester City with 150 offences dating back to 2009. Uh, for financial fair play so stick with me for tonight for two more videos one on FFP and another on uh, I think on the season and that what, 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 what we can expect hopefully from the last 18 games and a Q&A with me as well where you can just throw questions at me that'll be at nine o'clock so I'm going to be doing that at nine o'clock tonight a Q&A <clears throat> can you please uh, subscribe free to my YouTube channel it's dead easy I'll put the link on the on the comment section once I finish this video and also can you please invite and share Live Bird TV on Facebook and try and get as many uh, fans as we as as we can to uh, to help me push this group because I don't want I mean I did this without us to believers and then I got to 15,000 members and it started it started getting a bit mad uh, once you get the the, the, no disrespect you've got global fans that are great and go to games but you get once you start going a little bit too big you'll find that a lot of them on there are some of them are not even Liverpool fans some of them are third Liverpool fans after a team they support here and a team they support there and it can affect the quality so if you're going to invite can you invite people that are you know like to talk about football that contribute to the group that don't become like stupid and insulting and personal insults and that so decent football liverpool supporters invite please uh, and also like i say get on the youtube channel live bird tv and subscribe it's just clicking a button it's free uh, because once i get a thousand subscribers on my new channel i can then go live from youtube directly to here so Here's my preview for Liverpool versus Everton and like I say join me at 9 o'clock for my Q&A that I'll be doing and in between that there'll be an FFP rant about Man City that a lot of people like me doing. So let's get into my preview quickly for Liverpool v Everton. So Liverpool versus Everton is 13th of February, kickoff 8pm live at Anfield Stadium and here's my summary. Liverpool's fall from grace only seems to steepen with each passing week, leaving many questions needed, needing answers ahead of their famed Merseyside derby against City rivals Everton. Still winless in the Premier League uh, in 2023, Liverpool have drawn one and lost three. A humbling 3-0 defeat to Wolves last time out only served to ramp up the pressure on Jurgen Klopp. With Liverpool only ever starting a calendar year with a longer winless run once before, that being five games in the 2017 season when we drew three and lost two, a record they are now dangerously close to matching. To win games, you have to score goals and that's something Klopp's men haven't done in their last three Premier League outings with their 0-0 draw against Chelsea and their last Anfield run out being the first time they have failed to score in their last 33 Premier League home matches. The Reds do have a formidable home head-to-head -head record at Anfield to boast over Everton though, having experienced only one defeat in the home Merseyside derby since the turn of the millennium, winning 14 and drawing 10. I think, if I can remember rightly, that our defeat to Everton was when we didn't have any supporters, when it was a more or less empty Anfield. I'm sure it was. The current mood at Everton seems very different compared to just a few days ago with Sean Dyche's first game in charge at Goodison turning him into an instant fan favourite after the historic 1-0 win over league leaders Arsenal. That snapped Everton's 10-game winless streak in all competitions, drawing two and losing eight, moving them closer to surfacing above the bottom three. The Toffees therefore make the trip across Stanley Park in good spirits where a win would ingrain Dyche into Everton folklore considering only two Toffee managers have ever won their first league Merseyside derby against Liverpool. That would be quite the feat considering Everton have only won two of their last 27 Premier League matches on their travels where they've drawn seven and lost 18. But Dyche did famously oversee a victory at Anfield whilst in charge of Burnley. That famously ended Liverpool's 68 game unbeaten Premier League run. That's a stat I don't like. 
Dyche was the manager that ended our five year unbeaten home run. Key battle, Mohamed Salah has often been a late bloomer scoring nine of his last 19 goals for Liverpool past the 75th minute. Everton goalkeeper Jordan Pickford will be on a mission to stop the Egyptian having kept five clean sheets in his last 10 Premier League Merseyside derbies. Hot stat, Liverpool have only lost four of their last 159 Premier League matches when they have scored the first goal, winning 131 and drawing 24. So, Liverpool are 1-2 to two odds on favourites. Uh, Everton are 33-100 to 100 for a draw and 5-1 to one you can get Everton to win at Anfield. Sky Sports main event, Sky Sports Premier League in our UK and Ireland is the TV channel. Referee is Steve Hooper, S. Hooper, whether it's Steve, I don't know. Venue, Anfield. So, uh, let's just look at the squad standings. Standings in the league. Uh, Liverpool are currently sitting... 10th in the league, played 20 games. But again, I'll go back to this. We have two games in hand over Manchester United in third, and we have one game in hand over fourth place Newcastle, but two games in hand over Tottenham. Now, for example, if we can win... Uh, ha hello, Paul. Hello, Scott. Hello, George. Hello, Mark. How are you all doing? I'm just going to read this out quickly. If we could win, say, for example, I know it's a long shot, but if we win our two games in hand, that would put us on to 32, 35 points, which would put us... Eight behind Manchester United and only five behind Newcastle and only four behind Tottenham. And I mean, it just goes to show that just a couple of wins could reignite our season. Now, let's not forget that we've also got to play all the top four again as well. So, for example, let's say this. We can win our two games in hand over Manchester United, bringing us to eight points behind them. And then we beat them at Anfield. The gap is only five points and we have 18 Premier League games left. Now, yes, I know it's dead easy to say, well, well, we, we didn't beat Wolves. Oh, we didn't beat, we didn't beat this team or we didn't beat that team. We didn't beat, you know, uh, the team we played Brighton. So, but the difference is, is we didn't have Bobby Firmino against Brighton. We didn't have uh, Diego Jota, Virgil van Dijk's back. I mean, it's so great now that, I mean, even just seeing the images on Monday of, of Jota back in training and also Virgil and Bobby Firmino. And even Arthur, I said this, Arthur could have a really, really key part to play in the Premier League from now to the end of the season because we could use him in the Premier League games and we could save the legs of Henderson and Thiago for the Champions League. And that's what I think we should do along with Fabinho. So I actually think that Arthur, what's the point in him even being training with a first team squad now if we don't? absolutely go for it and get him in there so i want to see this bloke i want to see what he's got he was in the team that we played uh in the barcelona midfield with busquets and messi so he can't be the, the man's got to have sheer quality and i want to see him so if you can ask me a question now don't even have Naby Keita in any more squads i know you know my opinion against him and i don't rate him but he's just he's not he's going anyway so what is the point get Get rid. I could understand us playing him in during January because I thought that that was to show everybody that he's fit and we could get a fee for him. But now we're not going to get a fee for him because the window's shut. Sell him. Not sell him. Don't have him in the squad until he pisses off to Germany or Turkey, wherever he's going. Let's see what Arthur's got. Because Arthur's got 18 Premier League games now. 18. If he can stay fit for them 18 games and we get him because Juventus is skin. We could get him on a cut price deal next season for like 10 million. It's worth it. Extra body in midfield. So I'm really hoping, a bit like Sabitza at Man United, that we can get that, uh, you know, a little bit of rub of the green when it comes to look. Bobby Firmino coming back is massive. And Diego Jota is the pressing monster. And I said this to my boss at work today, as a Geordie, he's a big Newcastle fan. I said, what people don't realise in the, the blame in the midfield is Liverpool have always defended from the front. Front. If you look back during our glory years, we always won the ball back first up front before the midfield. The midfield just did the dog work, but, but the attack, Bobby Firmino was the master of winning the ball back. Jota became even better at that. Luis Diaz as well, pressing monsters. We have lost our fire up front. I think that's why the midfield's being exposed. And showing the depth because they're being attacked because there's nobody pressing up there. Nunes is good, but he stays to the left a lot more. Salah is just 
I don't know what's going on with Salah. He seems to have his head turned by PSG. But whatever happens, whatever happens, it is what it is. But like I say, that's my preview for Liverpool v Everton. Join me at nine o'clock if you want to do a question and Q and uh, Q and uh, question and answer with me. You can throw any questions at me that you want. And also, uh, I'm going to do the financial fair play video uh, with Man City. But I might actually do that. Uh, I might do that tomorrow night or Sunday. I'll do this, the Man City one on Sunday actually because I'm working for Celtic tomorrow and I'm not going to be back till 8 o'clock. So I hope you're all well. Get subscribing to my YouTube channel. I need your support. I need a thousand subscribers. It's free. You don't have to do anything. It's, it's not like you just got to click a button and then I can go live and get sharing the group and get inviting and get behind the lads. Do you know what? I've got the buzz back now and I don't know what it is with me. I'm a bit weird really. When Liverpool start losing games, I just, it's like my shoulders go back and my chest comes out. It's like I'm defending Liverpool from pillar to post at work to people slagging us off. And I cannot wait for games. When we're winning every single week, yeah, it's enjoyable, but it gets a little bit kind of boring for me. I like Liverpool being slagged off and then we just go bang and we just hit this run and we shut people up. We did it in Istanbul in 2005 when everyone was laughing at us. And I'm not being funny. I have, I, I, I wouldn't rule anything out this season with Liverpool because we've got the chance now to blood the youngsters, play our best team in the Premier League as we can, but rotate Arthur because Arthur's not in the Champions League squad. And in the Champions League, Real Madrid got beat by Mallorca on Saturday 1-0. I was actually going to stick a bet on Mallorca just for a laugh because their odds were ridiculous. I, didn't, I wish I'd have done it now. But they're not having a great season. If we can beat and use the power of Anfield, Real Madrid over two legs, our lads will just have this burst of confidence. And in a competition where Anfield is a factor for a second leg, do not write Liverpool off. This could still be a, a, an amazing season. You'll never walk alone.